Uh, my name is Prey Sakanvi, I'm 29 years old. I did most of my higher education in France, didn't finish my high school in France. And then I did um, digital transformation and digital project management in France. I've been in France for over 15 plus years, hence I speak French also. I was able to see this innovation firsthand in France and fell in love with it and how young individuals just had fun with the scooters. So I've ridden scooters a lot in France and just happy to bring it back to Nigeria. I'm, I'm quite young, um, being able to, you know, hop out from my classes in midday after uni, jump on the scooter, ride to lunch, um, back to my campus. So I've had my fun, shared a bit of fun with scooters in France. Three of our founders are based in France. We were always eager to see what's new in France, what happens with the young people also. So we saw scooters come into play and how it changed the way people moved around in Paris. Especially, I mean, Paris is a city where a bunch of young individuals, everyone just loves to party, everyone loves to have fun. And we saw how young people use the scooters not only to commute, but to have fun. And that was very important for us to get this technology and this product that not only solves the problem, but is also fun to use. That was something that I was like, okay, we have to bring it back to Nigeria. And most of us finished our universities in Nigeria. My co-founders finished in Nigeria and they could see how this scooters to solve a bunch of problems in their campuses. They then um, have an alternative to mobility, to micro mobility. That, that was the driving force to bring in track scooters to Nigeria and to even start the drive and see how possible that this could work in Nigeria. So track scooters uh, was founded by four amazing individuals, or well, myself included. Our CEO is Isaac, also based in France, Isaac Yeduku. Based in France, studied in France also, that's why I met, I met Isaac. We have uh, Joel, Joel Bailly, who is our CFO, Chief of Finance. Also based in France, very good friends also in France. Um, lovely guys, bunch of um, friends. Uh, the fourth and final person, co-founder and also our COO, Chief of Operations, Esther. She lives in the US and also finished our university in Nigeria at OAU. So we have a very strong force, young individuals that uh, want to drive this innovation to completion. Uh, we also have a very strong team in Nigeria from marketing to designers to content developers and all strong team that can build this innovation and carry this, this innovation forward. And most of us are quite young individuals that understand what, what this technology is and what the benefit is in these communities. And that's, I think that's what's key for our product. That our, our team is built up individuals that are not only eager to see this tech work, but are excited to see it grow in not only their communities, but communities around Nigeria and across Africa. So, Trek Scooters literally started with Isaac, who called me one day to his house to discuss on a project he had growing up somewhere, somehow. And we just I sat in his living room to discuss, and he said it was working on a micro-mobility solution, a way to move people around campuses in Nigeria, around communities in Nigeria, and it's thinking of a way to use the scooters we saw in France to solve those problems. And we just got, we got talking, we got brainstorming right there that day, it was a Sunday, I remember. Um, just got there, started talking and brainstorming on how to bring scooters that were new, even in Europe, to Nigeria for the first time, start thinking about marketing and how um, trying to source scooters obviously from China to Nigeria as for the first time trying to go around the logistics to bring those here and everything that's good with that um, we spent the afternoon just discussing on how to make this happen and then he linked me up with a friend of his Joel uh, our financial head of finance who jumped on it right away we discussed on the viability of this product how we can get to a feasible and financially stable state in uh, Nigeria and Africa as a whole. As I said, this tech is new and most of the things are imported. So 
we had him on board. Joel is very accountable and investment banker also. So he drilled deep into the feasibility of this product and we're able to see how we can make this work um, in Nigeria and in Africa as a whole. And then we, Isaac brought on his friend who were, they were both in OU together, studied together in the same university. She came on board, she, she is our chief of operations who basically brought this product to life. Um, anything that making this product viable from logistics to daily operations and how from the, 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 the business model, refining the business, business model in these communities we're in at the moment, um, she really has brought us the understanding that we needed. For myself, I've spent most of my time in France and there are lots of things that I needed to understand in terms of um, the business model here in Nigeria and how we can not only not just copy what we have in, in Europe but also amend accordingly. And for myself, I, um, I'm, a, I'm a digital project manager. I deal with um, digital transformation and setting up digital projects from like what we have now um, from the back-end side of things and which is our IoT devices and also the tech that goes into into uh, making the scooters work, our mobile app, developing that, and also our back-end um, fleet management platform. Setting, setting that and getting that running was, was my task. Um, we've been able to put together a very strong team to carry Trek scooters to where we need it to be. Trek scooters really started as a point where the COVID-19 uh, pandemic was just kick-starting. I think that was towards the end of 2019. Uh, Trek scooters is focused on accessibility, um, making the scooters ready and accessible for our riders. And making riding a scooter commonplace in these communities and affordability. So, Hence, making, making our products ready and available for people to use and making it commonplace that when someone walks out of his campus or walks out, walks out of his house, can just pick up our scooter and use. Uh, it's mostly accessibility to our products. We, we want to create that idea of last and first mile, first mile mobility in the mindset of people that I mean the product name is Trek, right? So replacing you trekking with using our product. That's where we are. We want you to think of instead of you uh, maybe taking your, your, your car to grocery shop, right? You can just walk out to your campus, walk out to your, your home or your estate and take out take our scooters and ride for your first and last mile needs. That's, that's where we are, that's where we want to do. That's where we're focused on at the moment. Trek is a really wonderful experience. My name is Adrina, I attend Pan Atlantic University. I'm in Information Science and Media Studies. And the Trek is one of the best things they brought to PAU. Like every night, I'm always on it. I ride it with my friends and it's really fun. Thank you. I prefer Trek compared to our works. My name is David Adube. I am a student of PAU and I'm in 100 level. In fact, I just recently got matriculated actually. And even after that, I would like to say that Trek, my experience with Trek has been one of great service and mobility because I don't think you can actually go wrong with Trek at this point in our lives. It's, it offers great services. You never go late for classes and the, the system itself alone is something else that I couldn't have dreamed of before I came to the school. I ride Trek often almost every day honestly. A big thumbs up for Trek. I'm bringing this technology to Nigeria and to Africa as a whole was more of a way to to bring us up to speed, to bring our communities up to speed in Africa, um, to, up to speed to where the world is going, where, where uh, micro mobility is going, where um, IoT tech is going. We saw this technology in Europe, and we were excited to bring it bring it back to Africa to basically bring us up to, up to, up to speed. Um, there are a bunch of things that would rise 
as we say, uh, a high tide will rise all, all boats, right? So a bunch of things that would come up to speed with this technology being in place from um, IoT, IoT technology, um, IoT SIM cards, these things would rise to the demand of our products. So I'm very interested to see where, where the next three to four years is going to take us in terms of what this ecosystem is growing to. As I said, I'm, I'm looking forward to growing this Internet of Things um, technology and see where it's going to lead us in terms of transportation or other things that will follow. I'm very, very curious to see that. Uh, I would say our, our competitive advantage is that we are eco-friendly. The idea is to cut down on our carbon footprint. The bunch of uh, the solutions we have right now in Nigeria, uh, the, the, the Keke Napep, um, our taxis, our buses, and, um, and all, the, uh, all those vehicles that use that, that, burn, uh, that burn carbon. Also, our technology and our service is quite affordable, pretty affordable, I would say. So the way our product functions, um, our riders would have to download our app to use our, our scooters. They, on their app, they would to locate all of our scooters in around all around them. So they can open a, they open the app. So they download the app on the on the app stores, and once they've signed in or signed up, they can see all of our scooters in their community. All they have to do is walk up to the closest one, scan the QR code that's on it, a QR code on the handlebar, and also at the bottom, they scan the QR code, and that gives them access to the scooter. We've been able to um, put a, a few security uh, and safety infrastructure into play in these communities. Um, our scooters are, on, are not only tracked and monitored, the health of the scooters are monitored, the, the, the batteries and all that, and the brakes are, are all monitored. And we're able to also track where they are in these communities. We monitor these scooters and also set geofence, geofenced zones for these scooters. These geofence zones are basically um, zones where the scooters do specific information, do specific things like um, either they reduce their speed or they just stop walking. So for example, a, a, a no-go zone would be where the scooters will get to those zones and they automatically stop riding. They have to bring them back to the business zone for it to function. So they stop riding and the alarm comes on. So these things we put into place to just reduce um, damages and theft and, and also to ha have an effective and efficient way to to service the communities we're in. Our major challenges so far have been um, in two parts. Firstly, from the back-end part of things. Um, our product needs connectivity to function. So we need data, internet part, internet supply. Um, as each of our scooters have a SIM card in them that um, we use to get data from and monitor and track the scooters. I would say a main challenge there was us not having the alternative to have this device or this um, tech here in Nigeria. We had to outsource, we had to go to a third party that was in Europe to source our SIM cards from. I think this is, these are things that we can definitely have in, in, in Nigeria. And secondly, I would say a major challenge had been us having to teach people what the product is about, um, trying to get them to not be too scared of it and to jump on a ride, um, understand that it serves a purpose and it's not just a toy to play with. Because these communities we're going, we're going to were communities where they had a younger audience and also pretty much restricted and they needed to understand this product wasn't a toy or something to play around with. And we needed to show them that this is a tech that solved problems. I think it, it took us a while to pass that message across. I think we finally got, got through that and now everyone loves our product. Anywhere we go to, um, we love seeing it, they love riding our scooters. Trek Scooter is a digital product. Uh, the growth of digitalization is important to sustain a product like this and to sustain more other more um, products that will come in the future. So it's, it's very important that we keep going with this in this this trend. This trend. Our product will evolve as we deploy in these communities. The idea is for it to for our the riders in these communities to give us feedback and also 
not only especially in the universities for them to join um, in a program we, we create in these campuses where the students from computer sciences to the mechanic engineers to reverse engineer our products uh, that's that's the idea that our products would evolve and change according to the needs of these communities so it's been it's been wonderful um, launching here in Pan Atlantic University um, being able to speak to the, speak to students and speak to young individuals that are curious and how this technology works how IoT works and how the connectivity and all that works so it's it's been wonderful so far and I cannot wait for what the future holds for not only the university for also the technology that we're bringing to this campus my name is Adebayo Uluwatomisi I am a student of the Pan Atlantic University of Nigeria. Now, I would like to say Trek has been a wonderful experience so far. It has solved a lot of problems dealing with mobility and to a great extent it has reduced the number of students coming late. So Trek has been a really easy way for us to move around. This is that we, we see us too far and just Trek it can get anywhere we want and the prices are quite affordable quite reasonable due to the speed and all trip africa imagine more